Good morning, everyone. Um, we we had a bit of a malfunction. I apologize for being a few minutes late, <laughs> um, but we uh, will get started uh, right off as we were just about to get started anyway. So, Drew, I'll pass it off to you. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Drew Mitchell, uh, Help Desk Manager, and as you've already heard, we have Allie Cookson with us today as well. We're going to be presenting on the ESEA Demographics Report. If any of you are new to or don't remember, we have with our team's webinars, you have the Q&A button in the upper right hand corner of your screen. If you click on that, you can submit your questions. We'll take brief breaks throughout the webinar to answer questions. It shouldn't take very long. It's a pretty straightforward report. I'll hand, go ahead and hand it over to Allie now. Thanks, Drew. So today we're going to go through the ESEA demographics report. Um, we'll go through when it's due, resources, and uh, how to view and access the report and what needs to be done for certification. Um, so to get started here, we will go through the upcoming reporting and webinars. So upcoming uh, for May, we have Maine Schools application, which opened yesterday. So that is available if you want to get started and kind of know what you're doing. We'll have a webinar on that next week on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. And the following week, we'll have a home instruction webinar with Pam Ford Taylor. Uh, ESA, ESEA demographics report will open on the 15th. And then we have another webinar on the 23rd and the 31st, and then right into June, we have another webinar. So uh, Tuesdays at 10 o'clock are those webinars. Uh, feel free to join us with the live links. Those links can be found uh, in the newsroom and also in the um, newsletters that are going out monthly. If you have not subscribed to that, please feel free to sign up for that on the website. So here is the Help Desk website. This is where you can find your reporting resources. Um, the link is here and we'll have this posted. This uh, presentation will be posted alongside the webinar recording and you'll be able to go right to it from here. Um, on the main page, we have our data reporting instructions tile and that will be where you can find the report instructions for the ESEA demographics report. On the data reporting instructions page, you'll be looking for ESEA demographics report. Right now it is currently right at the top. We just updated it, so it's right there, ready to go for you. ESEA demographics overview. This is just kind of why we're doing this reporting session. Uh, so this is an aggregation of students enrolled on 527 for participation in state assessments during the current assessment administration. So um, we are just looking at students who are enrolled on that 527 uh, for the district full year report. Uh, this report in includes student demographic categories for assessment and account accountability. So when we look at the ESSA dashboard, these are the reports that you would be filling out to see those numbers on that, um, on that dashboard. All LEAs with publicly funded students are required to com complete this report um, for assessment purposes. So report is going to open on 515. Um, you may see if you log in that it may be populating. If it's not, wait until 515 and you'll be able to see that data starting to come into the report. Um, it is looking at data for students on um, 527. So on 527, that will be the day that we're collecting. If you notice here, it is on Saturday. Uh, so the Saturday uh, date, once again, similar to April 1 and October 1, you'll want to make sure that you're checking those enrollments for that 527 Saturday date. So this is open on 515. It will be due on 615. Um, you won't be able to start certifying until about 61. Um, so just keep an eye out, make sure your numbers are correct throughout the end of May. And then at the beginning of June, you'll be able to certify. In order to locate the report, this report will be in um, NEO. So your student data, student reports, and then you'll be looking for ESEA demographic certification report. And there will also be a um, details report. 
So you have two different sections. The certification report is going to give you your aggregate counts. And then your uh, details report will go into detail about each student and the specific demographics to each one. So you can verify and make sure that if there are any errors that you can find the student who may be missing the count. Anyone who needs access to this report will need to have NEO access. So we'll need to have an access request form filled out if you have not had access to NEO before. This is something that your superintendent will have to submit on your behalf and can be found on the um, help desk website. You can also find it in this um, presentation once we've posted it. All these lives, all these links are live. This is just another view of how to access the report. So in the main screen of NEO, you have your student data dashboard. So we'll click student data. And then you have two different options to navigate to student reports. So you have student reports up at the top, and then you have um, click here to enter student reports. On the student reports dashboard, we have the ESEA certification report and the ESEA demographics details. Once again, the certification report is going to give you your aggregate counts, whereas your details report is going to go into each individual student and tell you who is making up those counts. This is your view of the certification report. You have um, various demographics for your students. It's just important to make sure that all of your counts are correct. Um, these are for students who are eligible for taking the assessment. Um, and so we have science, math, and ELA, and then access for ELLs. Just verify that everything looks good. You'll be able to navigate to the details reports for your attending students and your responsible students right here on the student um, on the certification report. This is where your superintendent is going to come to certify. So at the very bottom, if we keep going down, once again, we have more um, sections of demographics. So grade levels, this is only for students who are assessing. So you may not see them for all grade levels as grades pre-K, kindergarten, one, two are not required to assess. You won't see any counts there. Um, and then at the bottom is your other accountability indicators. So those are going to just verify that those look good. And then your superintendent will be able to certify at the bottom. So um, once everything's been verified, have your superintendent come in, click that certify and submit to DOE button. And there was a quick question in the chat um, that says, uh, so what we report on 527 are the numbers we should be doing, we should do when filling out our ESEA grant. Um, Drew, do you know about the ESEA grant specifically? I actually don't. We will follow up with the um, finance team and the assessment team and we will get back to you. Um, if you could actually email, you sent that as anonymous, so if you could actually email that question to the help desk, that would be very helpful. Thank you, Drew. All right, and then this is just a view of your details report, and so this is going into each of your individual students, um, and you can just verify their grade level, their um, sex, ethnicity, um, if they were a district full year, full academic year student, that means that they were enrolled from October 1st to um, 527. So they were continuously enrolled throughout the school year with your district. On this report, you can also search for specific students. So if you see an error with a count, you would want to make sure that, you know, and you, maybe you think you know who that student might be that's maybe making the count off. You can search their ID number, their name. Um, and then you also have the ability to save and export. So you can send this to an Excel file so you can sort it and see how many third graders do you have? How many fifth graders do you have? Anything that you wanted to see um, to verify any of those counts as well. And you also have column sorting there. You can do quite a bit of it within NEO or yeah, within NEO without having to export, but exporting also gives you a few more options if you prefer that. This is just the second view of the um, details report. Your asterisks are where the students are required to assess. So a student in 
uh, the top student here is a fifth grader, I believe, and so they qualify for the science assessment, so they would be um, able to take that assessment. See, yeah, they're fifth grade, so they are able to take the science assessment. Once again, all of this data is staged, so this is um, just so you can see kind of what it's going to look like on your end, but none of this is real. And then a few notes um, about this report. Once again, this is a Saturday, May 27th. Um, and so you'll want to coordinate with districts and make sure that students um, who move are accounted for for assessment purposes. Um, and any students who are district full academic year, if they move right before May 27th, they shouldn't be on your report. They should go. Um, to another district. So you, you have your district full academic year students are continuously enrolled from October 1st to May 27th. Those are the students that you would see there. Students exited prior to May 27th will not be counted on the report and only your superintendent will be able to click the certify and submit to DOE button. Another note that I wanted to make here Hi, Danette, it's nice to see you in our chat here. <laughs> um, another note that I wanted to make was that any changes to anything that you see in the NEO report for student data, if you have errors or something needs to be updated, that update needs to happen in Synergy. It cannot happen within NEO, so you'll have to go back into Synergy, update what needs to be updated, and then you'll have to wait an hour, hour and a half um, the countdown on the help desk uh, timer will help you determine when the next upload will happen from Synergy to NEO, um, but just keep an eye on that to make sure that any um, changes are being reflected. So come back in and check it and make sure that it looks good after that allotted amount of time. All right, that is all we have for this report. Um, if you have any questions after we close this out, feel free to contact the Medems Help Desk for any reporting questions. Um, and then if you have assessment related questions, student rosters, anything like that, those are going to go to the assessment team. Um, so you can send that over to them. Um, I am still waiting to hear back to them about the best person to contact, but once I have that information, I will include it in the slideshow. So that will be posted after the webinar. Um, and then if you would like any training opportunities within Synergy, NEO, um, state reporting requirements, anything like that, um, those can come to me directly um, and we can set up a session to talk about um, state reporting. And I see we have a couple questions coming in. So Drew, do you want to answer that question? I see you're typing to reply. I actually haven't clicked on it, but. Oh. <laughs> so we have a question. Does this report include students that are that we tuition to other schools? Drew, do you want to take that one? No. <laughs> um, there are two different reports in this. Uh, so you have your attending students and then you have your um, responsible students. And so on your responsible report, those will be your students who are tuitioned out. Um, whereas your students who are currently attending, um, this kind of goes back to your accountability um, with your enrollments and making sure that your enrollments are correctly coded, um, review the enrollment guidance to make sure that if a student, um, if a student shouldn't be showing up on your report, that they are um, correctly coded in Synergy to not uh, to not be showing up. Um, so the enrollment guidance document on the enrollment guides page would probably be a really helpful resource to determine if you should be seeing a specific student or not. Would you agree with that, Drew? Yes, good work. <laughs> Ellie's only been here for a couple months, so I'm trying to put her through the ringer with the questions. Yes, I've 
I've been here since July. <laughs> yeah, a couple months. Yeah. <laughs> According to everyone, that means I can still say I'm new. <laughs> But yes, if you have any other questions, please feel free to send them our way. Um, I see we have no new questions currently, um, but if anything comes up after we close out this for, um, webinar, if anything comes up as the report is opening up um, on the 15th or when you go to certify on the 1st of June, please feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to help and answer any questions um, that you may be happening. Um, I can, someone just asked if we can, if I can share the enrollment guidance documents. I certainly can. I'll put that link in this slideshow um, as well. Um, once I have everything, this should be posted by the end of the day today. I've been doing fairly well to get them out the same day, um, but it may, it may take a little bit of extra time. Um, so I will post any post out the Q&A as well. So I see Drew just shared that. Um, and so that link is there and we'll post it in our Q&A and I'll also put it in the slideshow. So you have as many resources as you need. Right, we still have quite a few attendees, so we will stick around for a few more minutes. If anyone has yeah. any more questions or wants to see something again, we're happy to do uh, do that or answer the questions. Thank you, Sarah, for being here. <laughs> All right, we're starting to see people drop off now, mm -hmm. so we'll go ahead and end the webinar. But as always, if you have any follow up questions, comments or concerns, just email or call the help desk and we'll take care of them for you. Yep. Thank you everyone Thank you for all. attending. Have a good day. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.